What's good, he's Shell trying to the most folk, no joking, I'm Back at again with a brand new video, and I'm gonna keep it a Bowberry Biscuit. This guy is really good. Now there's been a lot of guys out here, a lot of you guys have been in my comments, asked me to do uh, a draft board video on this guy, a draft board video on this other guy, and some other people. So this is a video that I wasn't going to do because I don't think we pick him up particularly, but he is a really good running back, and it it might happen. It might happen. And I'm talking about the man from LSU, the man with the blonde dreads. I'm talking about Darius Geis. Let's go straight down to PIP right now. Look at this man's uh, combine, his combine performance. Uh, Darius Geis, like I said, came from LSU. He's It says 5'10 here. I think he's actually listed at 5'11". None of that really matters. 5'10", 5'11", 215. The guy's built. He's a stocky kind of built guy. Uh, he ran a 4'4", 40. Not fast. Not really, not all that slow either. But, you know, not, not going to burn you. 15 reps on the bench. That'll get it done. Uh, 31.5 vert. Nothing too impressive. But for a running back, it's not bad. Running back is not bad. And he has a 6.14 prospect grade. I don't really look at these at all. I don't ever d discuss this when I do these kind of videos. But it says he should become an instant starter. So you are, So that just shows you how much, I mean, NFL.com looks at him. But I think anyone anyone who, who's looked at any of the draft boards or look, who knows anything about the, the, the players in this draft knows that Darius Geis is going to be a player who's going to be a big, a big impact on any team he goes to immediately. Uh, this bio said had a lot in it, but basically what it's saying is he's kind of like Leonard Fournette, and the analysis here shows he's a, his NFL comparison is Marshawn Lynch. But in the way that he's like uh, Leonard Fournette is that he got injured late, and NFL teams have, have, have a look at his year previous um, uh, tape, his game film to really make a, a really good uh, assessment of him because he really wasn't up to his full speed just this past year. Um, he had a lot more, he had a lot more of a workload, but his, but it didn't really correlate with how, how well he did in 2016, which I'll get to into his stats. But basically what it, what we're seeing here is that uh, he had an injury and he wasn't up to speed, but he's a big guy who can get a lot of things done for you. He's protecting him the first two rounds. I would not be surprised if Darius Geis isn't gone in the first round. If he is gone, if, I wouldn't be surprised if he's gone in the first round. Let me get that right in my head. Uh, basically, basically what you're looking at here is he had two really great years at LSU. His junior year really could have been a lot better. It could have been a lot better, and that's at no fault of his own. He still put up pretty damn good numbers for not having, for not being up to full speed. But if you compare his sophomore numbers to his junior numbers, you really can just tell he had a lot more in the tank. Uh, if he didn't get injured, he would have been up there, up there. You feel me? But his strengths are basically, he's a strong dude. Uh, he's a strong dude. He's built. He's powerful. He has a good, he has a good combination of speed, power, and just awareness. The biggest thing for him, not, I guess it's not the biggest thing, but one of the biggest things about him is he's very aware. He, he won't make you miss with his speed. He won't just, he won't juke you out your socks. But this man sees open lanes. He sees he sees blocks. He has good blocker vision. He knows where he knows he can see the uh, the lines the linebackers are going to be taken. And if you get him out in the open field, he can break one out for a long run, reminiscent of one Mr. Cameron Newton. Um, like and he also is another thing that makes him really uh, valuable is he sets up blocks pretty well. He's really good at blocking in the backfield on passing downs, which is really great for him because. He he's serviceable in the in the pass game, but he's not all that great as a receiving uh, running back. He had a, he had a few. I think he had like what two or three re uh, receiving touchdowns in his time at LSU, but nothing too impressive. You feel me? But um, uh, he can push piles. He's strong. He loves contact, which is kind of a strength and a weakness. We'll get into that in a second. And. Uh, and you have to hit him square. It says right here, angle tackles won't get it done. You have to hit him square. Hit those numbers. Lower your lower your shoulder pad and hit this man outright. And he he is not afraid to to to, to hit you. To to he's gonna he's gonna test you every single time. But uh, like I said, he's not a he's not a, a classic third down back. But he can pick up patches of yards on the backfield. So like he's not gonna catch anything in the third out uh, and on third down. But goal line situations. Uh, short yardage, inches situations, pile pushing, he can get it done for you. Um, especially in the pistol. 
When we have uh, Cam, him, and McCaffrey in the backfield, maybe even uh, maybe even Curtis Samuel. But his weaknesses are basically they all come together to form one big weakness. First of all, he's he's injury prone. He had injuries that that go back a few years, and uh, you you don't want to you, you don't like to pick up an injury prone player unless they're great like this, great like Darius Geis. But so first off, he's injury prone. Second off, like I said earlier. As a strength and a weakness, he's not afraid to go for, for contact. So a uh, potentially injury prone player that is that likes contact and seeks out contact, it's it's kind of a you you like that out of like a tenacity and fierceness out of your running back, but you also don't want to see that out of a injury prone player. And the third biggest thing is that he just doesn't have he just doesn't have crazy, crazy speed. So he's not gonna make you really miss. He's not gonna just burn right by you. So if he can't make you, if he if he can't make you miss, if he's not gonna just blow by you with his speed, he likes contact. He doesn't he doesn't want to get away. He wants to get he wants to touch you, and he's kind of injury prone. Those all work together to cause a sort of a, 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 a one big weakness being you just don't you just you just worry about his durability on the field, which is what one of the other thing right here up here says. Uh, yeah, guy says running style could lead to a shorter career, but has a chance to uh, make a big splash early. Look at his stats. We'll ignore his freshman year. Uh, 51 carries, 436 for three touchdowns. That's not bad. But um, his sophomore year, he had 183 attempts for 1,300 yards, basically 1,400 yards, and uh, 15 touchdowns, averaging, what, was it 7.6 yards per carry? That'll get it done. He also had, was it, one touchdown receiving? And then his junior year, he had 50 more uh, rushing attempts with 1,250 1200, uh, rush yards, for an average of 5.3, and you can just see that if he if he would have not gotten injured, he definitely would have had a much better year than his sophomore year. He wasn't up to speed and almost matched his production from the year previous. Uh, 11 touchdowns and th uh, two more touchdowns receiving. So yeah, three total touchdowns receiving for 100 100 yards for the his for sophomore and junior year. So like I said, not too crazy. Only nine and 18 receptions in his last two years. Uh, you go down to his awards and you know his uh, accolades and whatnot. He's always in the top ten in the SEC. He was number nine in the in the whole nation in 2016 in rush yards per attempt. But you can see right here, this man gets work done consistently. He's always at the top, and uh, the SEC is the place for running backs. It's where you go if you want to see a running back. I mean, we can talk about Stanford, but uh, if you want to see a running back, you look at, at, at the SEC, and if you're at the top of the list of, of these guys, then you know you're. Pretty daggum good. But like I said earlier, I just don't see Darius Geis falling to us just because we have other needs. But he's a really good player who's going to do some really big things for another another team. But the great news is, I don't think we're going to have to deal with him in the NFC South. So whoever has to deal with him, that's y'all's problem. But what do y'all think about Darius Geis? Let me know in the comments below, man. Uh, do you think he's better than some of these other players in the, uh, in the, in the draft with other running backs? Like Nick Chubb or Rashad Penny, Bo Scarborough, which he's a lower uh, round pick. But let me know, man. You already know to do that like button. I got a button right here to subscribe. A button right here for you to watch more videos. Namaste. Back to the thing you think.